Up next, elementary students get political. And a middle school classroom gets situated. All this and more coming up. Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to Frisco ISD TV. I'm Lauren Goodman. And I'm Michael Severance. In this political climate, kids seem to have an opinion when it comes to politics. In It's Elementary, My Dear, Ashley Jackson throws it back to students at Taylor Elementary who showed their patriotic side in an election of their own. The 2016 election season has been heated. Taylor Elementary School found a way for students to cast their votes with a flashback. We wanted to give the kids the experience of what an election was since we were ex having an election. Instead of using the candidates that we're in now, we chose to use past presidents, past uh, heroes, and they had to vote to see which one would work the best. Students gathered information on their candidate, then voted on who they believed should have a Frisco ISD elementary school named after them. We all lined up to go to the library and there were a lot of computers surrounded by these little things so nobody could see. I actually felt like this election was actually really important. After weeks of learning about their candidates, students were able to put their votes to the test. Who did you choose to be your choice? Um, Martin Luther King. I chose Barack Obama. Some even had strong opinions on why their choice is the right choice. I don't really like him very much. Uh, Martin Luther King was a good choice, but I didn't think he would know much about being president, so I didn't choose him. In addition to hands-on experience, students learn valuable lessons. I learned that just because you vote for one person doesn't mean everyone will always have your same thoughts about a candidate. The kids learned that when they had input on something and like a majority liked it, then they would, their person would win. So they got to learn that some of them that they voted for won and some you voted for some that didn't win. So they got to learn about winning and losing. In the end, students got the opportunity to learn about elections while being able to enjoy a unique election of their own. I'm Ashley Jackson for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Ashley. At Nelson Middle School, one teacher's unique classroom has their students relax and recline while their grades climb. Brian Barisa has more on students lounging and learning in the middle of it all. In most classes, you don't have this kind of experience, so I mean, this is definitely a change from the old stuff. This middle school teacher has created a home away from home for her students. With flexibility in mind, Ashley Lurs combines comfort with education. So the biggest compliment is they said it feels like their house. So I know that they're comfortable and they enjoy it and it feels it's kind of a different environment for them. So it doesn't feel like school anymore. With a wide diversity in seating, students pick their favorite place to work. Okay. To be honest, I really like the bouncy balls. My favorite like thing is the balance balls where you stand on it because like when you're really like anxious throughout the day, you can just like go on there and like not freak yourself out. When I started looking at how the kids' grades had literally improved across the board in all three of my classes, the class average as a whole improved by at least 10 points, which was huge. And students also noticed the impact. Changing grades of mine, I've seen a significant improvement. It's improved my grades as well, and it's made the class more comfortable for me to work in. The class welcomes the unconventional arrangement. It doesn't really feel like a classroom. It feels more like a house. It has like a couch, it has tables, it has like desks for dining tables. I like the style of learning in general because the way we sit impacts how we learn. With flexible classrooms growing in popularity, students are not only being taught the curriculum, but also how to help them learn. I'm Brian Barisa for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Brian. One student is racking up awareness in a competition for a noble cause. Here's Oscar Mihango serving up higher learning.
Independent Study and Mentorship, known as ISM, is a program made for Frisco ISD students who want to narrow their focus on a topic of study, such as researching pediatric oncology. Pediatric oncology is the study of tumor and cancers in children. So that's where that led me to decide to do something about cancer. Um, After I'm talking with her coach and friends, Angel Lee came up with a sporty idea to bring awareness to the issue. So I decided to host a charity tournament and we decided it would be a doubles tournament. So you could just grab you and your friend, you don't need any skills, it's just for fun and you're going to be helping out like a great cause. I just want everyone to come out and have a great time and meet with other people and know that they're helping out like such a great cause. And it sure did look like fun. Looks like a great, you know, casual atmosphere. It's a fun competition, and it's always fun to see my son play. I just hope he uh, has fun and plays well and gets a lot out of it. There's a consolation side for the people who lose in the first round, um, so you're guaranteed two matches no matter what. Get to hopefully play till the end. In the finals, you go to like two out of three sets, so it gets a little more difficult and a little more advanced, but it's still fun. Everyone's here for a reason. I like playing tennis, and it's for a good cause, and I mean, if you don't have anything to do on a Saturday, why not? I am playing in the tournament to raise money for uh, children who have cancer. The fundraiser brought in $1,200 for the American Childhood Cancer Organization. And I specifically chose this organization because it's the nation's largest organization that helps uh, support families and children that are struggling with cancer. Angel Lee was a little shy of a $1,500 girl. However, it did do its job of raising awareness and bringing a little tennis fun for everyone involved. I'm Oscar Mejengos for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Oscar. All year, CTE architecture students have been building up to their showcase. Reagan Robinson constructs the story in High Tech Happenings. Career and Technical Education Center Advanced Architecture students were given the task to put two in one as they build their futures. We didn't know what we were doing at first, we were just kind of making the rooms. Then Mr. Foley just came at us with a curveball, he's like, we're making a house. But not just any ordinary house, we're making a duplex house for two different families. It gives them a sense of realism, because every architect gets that one client that's hard to deal with and they give them parameters that are really hard to work with, and I did as much as I could to make it difficult for them and they pulled it off. They were able to come up with a design that gave the client what they wanted, but also succeeded in giving the parameters of the project. With all that space, we made floor plans. We had to design the inside of the house, which in my opinion was my favorite part. Students at this level are in their third year of architectural studies at the CTE Center. Not only do they learn in the classroom setting, they construct models for display during an evening showcase. This class is very much equipping me with how to work AutoCAD and Revit and how to build models and create things that are better than what other people would imagine a junior can do in high school. If you take intro classes, you can see, hey, this is my thing, or hey, this isn't my thing. And then if you continue to decide to keep going on that and you learn to like it, you're like, hey, you know, I can see myself doing this in the future. Having that kind of community that is your classroom, having that uh, work, teamwork is very vital because with my project, uh, I consulted a lot with my team, with my classmates, saw their ideas, and I kind of worked on, on top of that. From design specs to deadlines to the finished product, students see the value of working in an environment similar to a professional setting. I think part of the benefits is helping to get students out there and exploring all the different possibilities for the careers. Whenever I go off into the workplace, I'll be more prepared and more equipped to uh, do the harder stuff that they want me to do. I'm Reagan Robinson for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Reagan. Hey, Michael, did you know that Frisco ISD is taking steps to stay green? Oh, so that's why the lights keep turning out. Yeah, in fact, Frisco ISD is energetic about conservation in the district. Madison Looney powers up to learn more. A school district with fast growth in multiple campuses brings the need for more power. Frisco ISD has a new website that tracks energy usage. It has helped in the visibility of how much money we spend on uh, not just electricity, but natural gas, water, recycling efforts. It also shows how many pounds of CO2 are produced uh, to run a normal school. 
To try and curb the energy usage, Frisco ISD keeps up with the latest technology when designing new buildings, and campus administrators are aware of efficiency efforts. The schools are being built with what's called insulated concrete forms, which really reduces the thermal barrier between the inside of the school and the outside. The roofs are Energy Star rated roofs that reflect the heat rather than absorb it. They've also put in shades in our pods, so they have windows up high and, and we can bring those down or open them all the way and leave the lights off in the pod. All of our new buildings have geothermal, which is a great way to utilize, you know, the earth in order to, you know, heat and cool the building um, versus just electricity off the grid. But we have motion sensitive lights in the school, so anytime a room is vacant or a hallway is even vacant, then the lights go out. And the same is true of our air conditioning and heating. It regulates to a temperature that might not be like totally comfortable if people are in there, but it's appropriate just for the facility. Renovations to illuminate the courts throughout the district will last for over a decade. Uh, we have replaced the old lights that were in gym, starting out with a, an energy efficient fluorescent called a T5HO. We've actually just finished doing all the rest of the gyms in Frisco and instead of T5s we've put in uh, LED lights and those LED lights will last, we won't have to have any maintenance or anything on them for 10 or 12 years. A contest was held during the winter months to involve students and teachers in conservation efforts. When um, they came out with the contest saying that they were going to have the schools compete and try and you know win some funds, I sent an email out and so some of our little things we were doing, we didn't make it a huge, huge, huge deal with the students, but was to turn off the lights as soon as we leave the classroom. We've made a, a concentrated effort to make sure that our projectors are turned off every time the teachers aren't using them, because again, that saves on electricity, the light bulb usage. Students and staff have just been more cognizant of their energy usage. Sometimes only utilizing half of the lights or opening up the blinds during the morning so that they don't have to run the ceiling lights. When possible, even on the second floor, because we have skylights, we won't have the lights on in the hallway on bright days. But students have actually taken it upon themselves as well as to encouraging um, teachers to help save money. Our students here started Half Watt Wednesday, which kind of spread across the district, where basically they encourage teachers to dim their lights on Wednesday, or if they have windows and it's a sunny day, kill the lights. From construction to individual awareness, each person under a Frisco ISC roof can add to the savings. When you have so many buildings and so many people, every single penny counts and it adds up. I do not feel like anything we have done has been like a huge life-altering change that was so inconvenient. All those small little energy uses that make such a big difference. You know, those are things that we can just keep doing. It's one of those things that has to be a habit. You know, I would say that students and teachers just need to remember or have some sort of way of, of reminding themselves this is what we're going to do when we come back to school in August. In addition, lights and parking lots have been upgraded to motion sensitive LEDs and changes to other facilities are on the way as Frisco ISD continues to find ways to save. I'm Madison Looney for Frisco ISD TV. That's all for this episode of Frisco ISD TV. Join us next time when machines go medieval. And we meet a student who's able to inspire us all. I'm Michael Severance. And I'm Lauren Goodman. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.